Welcome to section 19 of the viruses. This is the overview figure showing all the viruses you need to know. In this section, we will be discussing the West Nile virus and St. Louis encephalitis virus, which you can see right here. Our story of West Nile and St. Louis encephalitis takes place in a news broadcasting studio during an outbreak of these viruses. We can see the banner right here along the bottom. It says, breaking news, West Nile and St. Louis encephalitis ravage North America. From the red and warm color scheme, we can tell that both of these are RNA viruses. We like to use dark colors for DNA viruses and red and warm colors for RNA viruses. So red warm colors for RNA. The news station has a split screen effect going on at the top right. The left of these two images shows a live feed of the St. Louis Arch with swarms of mosquitoes. The right image shows the West Nile with mosquitoes ravaging that area as well. Having the St. Louis Arch and the West Nile right next to each other on this image should help you remember that these viruses are so similar to one another that you should think of them together. Now notice that there is a rainbow reflecting off of the water in both images. These positive rainbows indicate that both viruses are positive scents. So positive rainbows for positive scents. Now here's a microphone for the news studio. It has the shape of an icosahedron. This shape will help you remember that St. Louis encephalitis and West Nile virus have icosahedral capsids. Now the epidemic has spread so far that it's reached the news studio itself. You can see all the mosquitoes swarming the place. This indicates that these viruses are transmitted through mosquito bites. Unfortunately, the mosquitoes have drained most of the blood from this news anchor. He fainted from the numerous bites and even spilled his water. Look at the water drench his entire head. The water covering his head represents encephalitis inflammation of his entire brain. Both St. Louis encephalitis and West Nile virus can cause encephalitis. In fact, it's the development of encephalitis that makes both of these viruses so scary. Now look at this line of mosquitoes on his back, each waiting its turn to take a bite from his neck. This line of mosquitoes will help you remember that these viruses are linear. Back here is a studio worker trying to fend off mosquitoes with repellent. The bottle is labeled DEET. DEET, or diethyltoluamide, should be sprayed on one's skin to repel mosquitoes. And if you don't get bit by mosquitoes, you don't get the virus. So when you will be around mosquitoes, always remember to spray some DEET. Now both of these men have taken at least some precautions to prevent mosquito bites because they are both wearing long sleeve shirts. Wearing long sleeve shirts is a smart way to prevent mosquito bites. It obviously didn't help our comatose news anchor because the mosquitoes found his fleshy neck, like we discussed before. Unfortunately, this man who was spraying DEET all over the place is now forced to taste it as it lingers in the air around his face. We can see him gagging on those flavorful chemicals. This bad flavor represents flavivirus. St. Louis encephalitis and West Nile virus are both flavoviruses, so gagging on bad aerosolized flavor for flavivirus. Now that we've covered the information in the image, let's do a question to apply this. A 52-year-old man is brought to the emergency department by his wife due to confusion, headaches, and worsening weakness for two days. The wife explains that they have spent a lot of time outdoors this summer to get some sunshine. When asked about the situation, the patient fails to respond appropriately. On physical exam, his temperature is 38.8 degrees Celsius, or 102 degrees Fahrenheit, and he demonstrates 2 out of 5 strength of the left upper extremity, and 5 out of 5 strength in all other extremities. There are various bumps on both arms consistent with recent mosquito bites. The physician is concerned about a viral CNS infection and orders a lumbar puncture. Cerebral spinal fluid is collected and results are pending. Which of the following is most consistent with the patient's presentation? A. The infection may have been prevented with insect repellent. B. The pathogen is a linear virus with a helical capsid. C. The virus can be transmitted via saliva from an infected human. Or D. The virus is a member of the Picornaviridae family. Now hopefully from the question stem you notice that the patient has symptoms of encephalitis. He demonstrates confusion, headaches, and weakness. And we also see that the weakness is asymmetric, with only the left upper extremity demonstrating decreased or 2 out of 5 strength. And he also has a mild fever and evidence of mosquito bites. Appropriately, the physician orders a lumbar puncture to investigate encephalitis. So putting all these details together, we are led to believe that a mosquito transmitted viral encephalitis. With that in mind, the correct answer is A. The infection may have been prevented with insect repellent. Recall this man spraying DEET around to repel the mosquitoes. Now choice B is incorrect because the pathogen is a linear virus with an icosahedral capsid, not a helical capsid. Remember the icosahedral microphone? And choice C is wrong because these viruses are transmitted through infectious mosquitoes, not from human saliva. Finally, choice D is wrong because West Nile and St. Louis encephalitis are of the flavivirus family, and not the picornavirus family. Remember that bad flavor the man was gagging on? And with that, you've learned all you need to know for West Nile and St. Louis encephalitis.